These are LeBron James's rookies right here. Four years ago during the pandemic, Jason Blumenstock was struggling. His regular job of owning a remodeling business wasn't cutting it. Then he realized a passion he's had since childhood could get him out of debt. Money was tight, so I had to resort to selling cards. Now he's making deals worth hundreds to hundreds of thousands of dollars daily. That's, I don't know, that's probably about half a million dollars here. Recently, I got a $30 box at Meyer and sold it for $15,000. So that's a pretty good return investment. He picks up new cards every day, hoping to get lucky. Oh, there you go. All right. You got a Donovan Mitchell out of 25. That's a rare, oh, that's, so that's rare. Oh, sorry, that's rare, yeah. Oh yeah, there's only 25 of those made, so you did good. While selling NBA memorabilia is a side hustle, it doesn't feel like one to Blumenstock. It's just a hobby and a passion for me. Ted Rossman is a senior industry analyst with Bankrate. Especially if you're putting in all this extra time and energy, it would be nice if you enjoyed it. He thinks people who are already passionate about something have the best luck in turning a profit. But the most popular gigs he's seen are online businesses, babysitting, landscaping, and home repair, which can bring in, on average, an extra $500 to $1,000 a month. The average American has about $6,000 in credit card debt. So if you're able to make $600 a month, well, in 10 months, you could have that debt paid off. There is no set group of people who have a side gig. Data from Side Hustle Nation shows 33% of participants have a yearly salary of $100,000 to $250,000 and work at their side hustles on average less than five hours a week. So it's not just, you know, low income earners who are going after this stuff. It's people all throughout the economic spectrum. They also found personal freedom, money to make ends meet and extra income to save are the top reasons for starting a side hustle, which two families understand. Andy Sethopoulos has been cooking for decades. I love cooking with my dad and my papu. When my dad's gone, it was just me and then Chris. He and his best friend, Chris Conley, decided to turn their love of cooking into a side hustle. People have been telling us for a while we should do this. We had to get to our wives in on it. They were with it, so we kind of ran with it. After working as a teacher, driver, and at a service repair shop by day, they spend their weekends here, inside of Gridiron Barbecue, smoking up meats, Macs, and even Cheez-Its. Oh mm. <laughs> they recently started this side hustle after investing $30,000 into Gridiron and are booked for events through June. Our goal for the first year is to pay this pay off. Pay our bills. Pay our bills, pay, pay this bills. off, and then... They have big plans once they start turning a real profit. Sell its college fund. Oh, I get to retire. That's what he did. <laughs> and similar to Blumenstock, Smoking is just fun for them. It really wasn't work. And we've said too, once we get to where we don't like cooking, when well, we're not doing work. Yeah, we don't want to ruin the hobby. Ruin like I love the creativity. Kayla joins us now. And Kayla, it seems like people needing a hustle, uh, side hustle, many of them are needing one to make ends meet. But there's some things that they really need to do to make sure that they're safe while making money. Yeah, Gabrielle, and while both of those pairs of side hustlers agree that people should really give it a shot, experts say that there are some red flags that people should be aware of, and one of those is if people are asking you to pay your money to the side hustle or if they want your personal information. Great advice, Kayla. That was Kayla McDermott reporting live for us this afternoon.